Good morning, Vietnam! My name is Todd with Vanguard Airsoft and Living History, and today we're going to be talking about my Vietnam blank fire reenacting impression that doubles as a Vietnam historical airsoft loadout. Now, we've already gone over this exact impression in my last video, but I'm not satisfied with the quality of that video, so we're going to be reshooting it today. So, without further ado, let's get started. My impression is of a Grenadier in 3rd Platoon, Charlie Company, 1st Battalion, 8th Cavalry Regiment of the 1st Air Cavalry Division between the years of 1970 and 1971. During this time frame, the 1st Air Cavalry Division was operating in an area north of Saigon near and along the Cambodian border. Their mission was to locate and disrupt enemy operations along the infamous Ho Chi Minh Trail. These missions could place soldiers in deep jungle terrain for weeks at a time, and as you'll see in this video, the equipment reflects this mission. As a grenadier, the weapon I carry is a King Arms M79, which is an airsoft replica grenade launcher. However, its realistic design and operation make it a common choice as a stand-in for real M79s in many Vietnam reenacting groups. And whenever I take this into public or private events, it always draws a lot of attention. My helmet is the standard M1 steel pot helmet in use since World War II. On it, I have the standard Mitchell pattern camouflage helmet cover, brown side out. The only graffiti that adorns my helmet is the name of my hometown, Mount Holly, New Jersey, and San Francisco, USA, near a small peace symbol. In the helmet band, I have a bottle of insect repellent, a church key, a P-38, and a roll of sea ration toilet paper. My uniform is the excessively baggy, lightweight, cotton poplin ripstop tropical combat uniform. My trousers are tucked directly into my spike protective tropical combat boots with molded Panama soles. Around my neck, I have the ubiquitous OD green field towel, as well as a Claymore bag stuffed with my 40mm grenades. Alternatively, I have a 24 pocket 40mm grenade vest. Also around my neck, I have a 35mm Kodak camera. On my pistol belt, I have two canteen covers, each with a one port canteen, as well as a first aid compass pouch with a triangular bandage. Attached to my belt loop hanging on a carabiner is my private purchase Western Cutlery Company Bowie Knife, one of my favorite pieces of my impression. My rucksack is a tropical rucksack, mounted on the lightweight rucksack frame, which is a setup particular to a few divisions during the closing years of the war. As you can see, I have several canteen covers and grenades hanging on the webbing, and additional canteens hanging on a carabiner. On the top flap, you can see my gas mask bag and gas mask, and under the flap, I have my M1942 machete in its sheath. Also tied to the front is the bandolier for the M18 Claymore mine, in which I have 100 feet of wire, an original placker, and a supercell M18 Claymore. Strapped to the bottom is my sleeping roll, which consists of three components. The outermost layer is a heavy rubberized poncho, which acts as a ground cloth or overhead shelter. Next, we have the rubber inflatable mattress. Finally, we have the ERDL camouflage poncho liner. Combined, it makes a very comfortable sleep experience, however, the roll is rather bulky. Inside the three outer pockets, I have the most essential items ready for quick retrieval. In the right pocket, I have my personal hygiene equipment and a few personal items. In the middle pocket, I have a flashlight, a section of paracord, gloves, and my weapons cleaning kit. Finally, in my left pocket, I have a boonie, a pair of socks, and one meal. In the main compartment, I carry two spare uniforms, a couple pairs of socks, a few t-shirts, a sleep shirt, and the rest of my rations. My rucksack comprises most of the weight of my load, which tops out at around 80 pounds. I started this impression over five years ago, and it's not even done yet. That's because there's always one more thing to acquire. As a historical impression, it's a fantastic teaching tool, but I have to admit, as an airsoft loadout, it's just a bit too much. I like to think that I've matured since I started this, and I've come to accept that this isn't an airsoft loadout anymore, but it's become something much, much more. Hopefully this video gave you some insight into the conditions that our soldiers had to endure day in and day out during their time in Vietnam. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you want to know more, check out VietnamAirsoft.com and the Vietnam Reenactors Facebook page, both of which I've left links to in the description. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe for more, and until next time, this is Todd from Vanguard Airsoft, signing out.